All right. God bless your family. How is everybody? It is 7 o'clock. And it's time for the word. It's time for the word. Pray you all had a great day today. Hope you were staying uh, indoors. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, today has been one of those... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I won't say trying. Uh, I think the problem today was I did what I told most of you all not to do. And that was I spent a lot of time looking on social media and uh, a lot of time uh, reading some of the things that were sent to us concerning this epidemic that were not necessarily healthy and uh, cause for concern. All right, hey, Brother Thomas, God bless you, man, I see you. And so there's some things that I read that were uh, a cause for concern about what the government is trying to do uh, in a few weeks uh, from what I hear. I can't prove it. It's only what I heard was that they were trying to do a nationwide shutdown. You know, as soon as they got the uh, people in place, like the National Guards, and the people uh, of that magnitude in place, then they were going to shut everything down for two weeks. But I realize that God is still in control, family. God is still in control. And so all of our trust is in the Lord. And so we don't fear and we don't worry about what's going on. Uh, as the word always says, we're not concerned about what, what man can do to us, but what God, the one who, who controls life and death. And as long as our hand is in his hand, then God has everything under control. And one thing we know for sure is that God does all things well. And that's our resolve, that God does all things well. Let's pray and then let's get started because I'm getting ready to roll. I mean, I started, I started you know, already. Glory to God. Father, tonight we thank you again for this time of sharing with these people. Thank you, God, for all those who are online and who have chosen to tune in tonight. Father, I pray that you would give me something to say that will inspire them. Hey, Nisi, and I pray that you would give me a word to inspire them tonight, Lord. And I pray not only do we get this word, but allow this word to be activated in our hearts, dear God, that uh, during this season, we'll look to you. You declare that you're the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you. And we bless your name so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And so, as, as I was saying earlier, when we understand that, that God has everything you all in control, we don't allow ourselves to walk in fear. Uh, one scripture we often quote quite often is Romans 8.28, which says, And we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And because we know that all things work together for our good, we don't always understand why God allows what he allows. Hey, Sister Brown, how you doing, Charlotte? And we don't always understand why God does what he does and why he allows what, what he allows, allows. But what we do know is that we trust him, right? And we know that he does all things well. And even in this, there is a purpose. There's a reason. There's a strategy behind what God does. And we don't always understand why God does what he does. You know, I was telling them today that oftentimes we try to figure out what God is doing. Hey, Sister Cynthia, and we want to figure out what God is doing. And we want to always figure out because of our need to know. You know we all have this need to know, uh, this need for answers. All right. And I totally understand right now we are in an in a information age and, we want answers, and I think what's really frustrating to us in this season is that there are no um, definitive answers other than it's here. You know, it's here, and it's doing damage across the nation, but not just, just across you all, our nation, but it's doing damage uh, technically around the world, you know, and uh, it's easy to blame everything on the devil, and it's easy to say that God did it, you know, but I do know this. That according to the word of God, that if all things work together for my good, 
then even though I don't understand it, I must then live in the resolve that some kind of way it's working together for my good. Hey there, my son. Uh, as always, I ask you all to please share this page. I want to give you some good information that I believe is going to bless you tonight. So can you please share this page, share this this uh, uh, little stream tonight, all right? I think it'll bless you and those who look in. And so since we understand then that all things work together for our good, because the word of God says that it does, and since God can't lie, uh, tonight I want to give you some things, the simple things that you can do, that I can do, that, ooh, forgive me, that will help get us through, you know, some things, some practical things that we can do right now that will get us through this moment. Uh, tonight, I want to talk about or talk from the subject of speak the word only. Speak the word only. Now, I am pulling this thought process out of um, uh, Matthew, the eighth, uh, eighth chapter. But it's coming out of the eighth verse. Here it is. The centurion came to Jesus and he said he had a, a, someone sick. He had a, a, a servant that was sick. And because his servant was sick, he knew that Jesus had the capacity or the ability to heal his servant. And when he came to Jesus and asked him about coming to heal his servant, Jesus told him, says, I'll come and I'll heal him. Now, this is important. Jesus says, I will come and I will heal him. Now, here is what I want you to see. Jesus was coming to the centurion at the request. Hey, Sister Angela, how you doing? I see you. Sister Barbara, God bless you. Brother Milton, I see you. And because Jesus was coming or he was moving in that direction at the request, watch this now, of someone who believed in him. All right? Don't, don't miss that. He was moving in that direction because someone believed in him. Now, come on. It's going to make sense in a few minutes. It was this man's belief that caused Jesus to move in his direction. Now watch this. The centurion told him, he says, he says, I'm not even worthy that, 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 that you would come under my roof. Now, um, first of all, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, I got a problem at home. My servant, my, my, my dude is sick. Come pray for him. But then it almost looked like he had a recalculation in his thought process. Elder, God bless you, sir. He says, he says, I tell you what, I'm not that worthy that, 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 that you would come under my roof. He said, but here's what you can do. If you can speak the word only, he says, my servant shall be healed. He said that my servant's whole life is going to be changed. My servant's life is going to be transformed, not because you touched him but because you spoke a word. Don't miss this family. Not because Jesus went to lay hands on him, even though he said he was coming to do it. Jesus clearly says, I'll come heal him. But then the centurion realized that Jesus did not necessarily have to step foot in his house. He said, here's what you do. You have so much authority. He says, I understand authority. After all, I'm a man under authority. I say, one tell one to go, one go. I say, come, one comes. Now, watch this now around verse number 10. The Bible says that Jesus was stunned. Can you imagine Jesus being stunned? Pastor, the Bible didn't say he was stunned. Okay, it said he marveled. Okay, he marveled. He, he was stunned. Come on. We don't say he marveled in Chicago. Hey, Pastor Kirk, God bless you. Charlie, how, how you doing, sir? God bless you. The Bible says that he stung. He was marveled. He marveled at this man's faith. Now, 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 now consider this. There aren't a whole lot of places in the Bible where Jesus says, I have not saw such great faith. But everywhere you see where Jesus says, I have not seen such great faith, it's only because someone dared, watch this, to believe 
And this is what I often tell our church, that God is not moved necessarily by what comes out of our mouth, but he is moved by the faith or the belief that we have in our heart. See, the Bible says that, um, that, 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 that anything that is not of faith is sin, right? Which simply makes me believe then that if I'm walking in unbelief, then I'm telling God I don't believe him. Now watch this now, because there are some folks who believe, who believe on him or believe in him, but, or believe on him or don't believe in him. Let me see if, if I can say it like this. They believe he's God. Hey, son. Hey, mother. Hey, Sister Sharon. They believe that he's the son of God, but they don't believe in him. See, Satan believes in fear and tremble. But there are some people who don't believe that God has the ability, the capacity, or the want to to do anything in their life. Hey, Kim, I see you. How you doing? And so our job, if we really believe, watch this now, if we really believe this word, and this is why I often tell our church, we have to move from just coming to church, but moving to believe what's said by the word of God, what's ever said of the word of God. This is why it's important that the word of God is rightly divided. Because there's some folk who whole belief system is going to, thrive or fall apart based on what they hear us say, right? This is why I said one of the, the most strenuous jobs in the planet, on the planet, is to be a pastor or a teacher or an apostle or a prophet or someone who's an oracle or a mouthpiece of the word of, uh, of God because people's lives are in the balance and they hinge or hang based on what comes out of our mouths. And so we don't get a second chance to be right. <laughs> Come on, glory to God. We don't often get do-overs when it comes to the word of God. Lives are at stake. And so, hey, Doris, I see you. How you doing? And so our job is to make sure we get into the word and find these principles in the word of God and allow these principles to work for us, not against us. See, Hosea says people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, this is what God is saying about his people. That we are destroyed for what we don't know. And understand, it is what we don't know that's really hurting us. And so, so tonight, I want to talk about speak the word only. Because there are many of us that we spend a lot of our time, or have been spending a lot of our time devoting it, saying the wrong thing. We have been identifying more with the virus and its capacity to take us out. So, so Tracy, God bless you. We have been more identifying with the effects of the uh, uh, covert 19 as opposed to identifying with what the word of God says, which means then that our strength is really found in what we say and what we believe. I'm going to figure it again. Somebody get that. Our strength is found in what we say and what we believe. Pastor, help me out there. The Bible says that the word is nigh thee even in thy heart, in thy mouth, the word of faith that we speak, right? And so if the word of God is in my mouth and in my heart, the Bible says we believe, therefore we speak. And so we only say what it is we really believe. Now, there's a difference between what I believe and what a theory is. All right, a theory is an opinion formulated by somebody they put out there, and if it sounds good, unless I can really back it up, then it's a theory. Hey, Lady Sarden, Brother Mario, God bless you, man. Hey, son. And so uh, a theory doesn't really carry weight unless uh, they have absolute proof. But a theory is someone's opinion. The word of God is not theory. The word of God is the truth about, uh, about God and what God has the ability to do and what God wants to do and has done for his children. Hey, Britt, I see you, girl. You didn't call me today. I'm just saying what I'm saying. And so the Bible says here in this text, and it, give, it gives here the suggestion that this centurion 
have the capacity to believe God. Thank you for sharing, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, cuz, for sharing. I appreciate it. Sharing there in Atlanta. Hey, my mother. Hey, Lady, Lady Sarah. And so he would not have come to Jesus. Understand, this centurion was a man of statue, right? He, he, he guided armies. He had people under him who were subject to do whatever he told them to do. Yet he submitted himself to call on a rabbi or to call on Jesus to come and do something because he believed, hey, G, he believed that it could be done. Now consider this now. Here it is. I'm sure he had doctors already at his disposal. He had the best physicians already at his disposal. Yet he made a decision to come to Jesus. Hey, is this the green? Is this the low, low? I see you, girl. Listen, y'all, please share this. Please share this. He made a decision that instead of going to all these physicians and getting a maybe a hit and miss, I'm going to the man who I know can do something. Now, Jesus made a decision to come. He came because the man asked him to come. But then this man said that, listen, there is enough power in your word. That if you just sing your word, your word will heal. and It will do the same thing even though you are not there. If you send your word there, then the word you send there will be just like you being there and will do what you what you would do if you were there. Come on, somebody. Pray and make it sense. Hey, Sister Betty, God bless you. And so, and so Jesus, Jesus marveled and said, Unbelievable. He says, He says, Somebody got it. Come on. Somebody actually got it. Somebody understands. Somebody believes. Watch this. That there's power. is much power in what I say. Or if I actually come and lay hands on you. Come on, y'all. Get this. He believed that there was just as much power in what I say. Hey, there, my, my, my brother. Let me see. True Lang. I got it. I got it. God bless you, man. Tell Britt I said, hey, all right. There's enough power in what I say. Jesus would say that if he would simply speak the word, hey there, my friend, Dr. Razor, that if he would simply speak the word, the watch this, the word you speak, watch this now, class, the word you speak would change or transform that situation. Now, this is vital. Because if what I say has the capacity and the ability to change my situation, if it will work for Jesus, it should then work for you and I. Come on now. It's going to take some faith here. Because the Bible said in the book of Hebrews that the worlds were framed by the word of his mouth. Right? Would simply mean that God did everything. And watch this. His hands did nothing. He spoke. And things begin to appear. What was in him showed up because of what he said. Only when it came to a man was the first time God put his hands in the earth. But everything else he spoke out of his mouth. Now watch this now. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. Because I'm getting out of here. I'm going back to my daddy. Come on. And he is now set down. At the right hand of the Father, right? And so, hey, is it the Lord walking in my calling grass? See you over there. Bless your heart. And so, Jesus now, he says that I'm leaving. And what I do, these works you see me do, he says, you're going to do it. He says, I am turning over all this that I do, all this power, all this example, everything I've laid before you. He said, I'll lay it before you, and now you will do what I do. And so today, as I begin to meditate, I said, God, everybody is giving strength to this fire. I mean, dear God, it's all on the news. It's all on Facebook. Man, I almost want to cut my, my messenger back off. Look like every time I get a message, a message from messenger, it's because somebody is telling me about this virus. Listen. 
my mind is so been so bombarded with information about this virus that if you're not careful, listen, even the very elect would lose their faith, even the, those of us you who love God for real. If you're not careful and don't let this thing get so locked up in your head that it will mess you up and watch this, you will lose the faith and start believing more in what the virus can do than what God has already done. Hear me, Pastor Larry, make this make sense. If we keep spending our days and our nights giving this virus rule and, and, and strongholds in our mind, hey, Latonya, now listen, I'm not saying it's not real. Hear me. I am not denying that. It's killing folk everywhere, not just in America, okay? All across this world, bless God, is taking folks out of here, all right? But what I do know is that the God that we serve is much greater than the virus. But if I keep on talking about the virus and never talking about God, I give the virus more weight. Come on. I give it more authority. I give it more prevalence. I give it more weight, more control in my mind. But Pastor, what do I do? Now you ask the right question. I'm so glad that you asked. Because it's not what we can do with the virus, it's what we say out of our mouths. Listen, the Bible says your tongue, watch this now, your tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Hey, Sister Jones, God bless you. I see you. Watch this now, your mouth, your tongue is the pen of a ready writer. In other words, your tongue has the capacity to rewrite this script. The question is, do you want to rewrite it? Come on. People are living in fear. They stand. Listen, I felt so bad today. My eight-year-old grandbaby was upstairs trying to figure out, bless God, how to make a mask. Come on. I was too done. I was studying this lesson, and she was on the same table I was on. And I see her with two of those bandana scarves, and she's on TikTok or something trying to figure out how to make a mask to protect yourself. And it was at that point I began to cringe and said, Dear God, that if my eight-year-old granddaughter is at home panicking, trying to figure out how to survive, how to stay alive, then somebody has got to tell her about the power of Almighty God. In your house, someone has got to step up to the plate and declare that the power of death and life Watch this. It's not in the virus. The power of death and life is not in Satan. The power of death and life, watch this now, is in what you say. Glory to God. Hey, Patricia, let me slow down. I ain't trying to preach. But the power is not in what the virus can do to you. Watch this. Here is the true power is in what can we do to the virus. Oh, dear God. Woo, get ready. Y'all, let's, let's go there. Come on. The question is, what can my faith, what can our faith do to destroy this virus? Last night, I stayed up to about 3 o'clock, and maybe that's why if Pastor looked tired, I was up last night, you all watching the story about the uh, the uh, th the uh, two world wars that took place, uh, 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 and I, I watched World, world War One and World War II, uh, II, and I watched the strategies of the generals and how they they began to set presidents and do things to make sure that each country had the best chance to win. Ah, baby, stay up there. Okay, stay up. Go stay up, sweetheart. And watch this now. I watch them how they strategize on what to do to win the battle. And then I begin to think, listen, what would happen if the church began to strategize on how we can defeat this devil? Watch this. Not with our fists. Come on. Listen, I got a size 18 fist, all right? I got two great big dynamuses over here. But listen, we can't fight the devil with, with our fist. If we could, by now, we would have whooped this backside a long time ago, praise the Lord. But watch this. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, against principalities and rules of darkness. That's who, what we fight against. And so if we are going to win the battle in the spirit, 
I'm, I'm sorry, against a spiritual being, then we must begin to fight in the spirit. Come on, church folk. We must learn how to fight in the spirit. Do spiritual warfare in the spirit realm. Listen, cussing this virus out ain't going to make, make, make it go no place. Come on. To be told, going to the doctor's office won't stop it. But watch this. God has given us the power to shut this thing down with our mouths. Here is the question. How do you really believe? Come on, I'll wait. I'll wait. Because that, that, that's a serious question. What do you really believe? Because if we really believe, watch this, I believe it all my heart. If we really believe this word like we're supposed to, by now we would have shut this thing down and caused it to turn. Why? The Bible says that our tongue is like a rudder on a ship. And it turns the big, watch this, how it turns a great big ship. And I believe, watch this now, and I say this by the Spirit of God. I believe that some of God's children have been talking more about this virus. Every time you open your mouth, you're giving, you're adding gasoline to it. You are refueling it. Hey, bless you, Pastor Brinson. What you're doing is you're refueling it. You're throwing gasoline uh, uh, onto the fire of this virus. But the devil is a liar. It is time for us to break out our, 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 our spiritual water holes and begin to put this thing out on purpose. Listen, you saying, Pastor Larry, we can't stop it. Yes, we can stop it. Pastor, how do you know? Because when a storm arose, when Jesus said, peace be still, he turned and said, all oh, you of little faith. Watch this. He rebuked his disciples, Pastor Why? Because they should have took authority over that storm. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Sharon. I see you. God bless you. Good to have you on. Hey, Shante. Watch this now. They should have taken authority over the storm. And Jesus said, he said, wait a minute. How long must I be with you? How long must I suffer you? In other words, what else do I need to show you to do? Everything I've showed you is what you should be doing and then i realized i said oh dear god no one is telling us to speak to the storm we all talking we all talk, talking about oh what what it can do and i pray you know get in my house and that's good but listen i'll be speaking to it i'll be speaking to it jesus says you can have whatever you say jesus said in mark the 11th chapter Whosoever shall say to this mountain. Now, in the original Greek uh, uh, rendition, you will see a small dot by the mountain, which means Jesus is actually talking to a mountain or about a mountain. He's saying this mountain right here, if you speak to it, it shall obey you. Glory to God. Listen, family, it is time for us to begin to speak to the mountain of COVID-19 and begin to deny it its power. Come on, deny its momentum and cut this joker off, praise the Lord. Come on. But watch this. I'll tell you why we don't do it. I'll tell you why we don't do it. We don't do it because many of us still don't believe. This is why I often tell our church folk, listen, our family, our church family, when you come to church, don't come to church just to be coming to church. Come on, don't come and allow, don't get up, get dressed and come to God's house and then allow someone to distract you from getting the word because the word is what I need in a crisis. And now we're in a crisis and now the word that was preached back in yesterday, yesteryear, we don't, we didn't recall it because watch this, we were in the house but not paying attention. Come on, we were in the house where the word was going forth but the word didn't get into our heart. We were in the house where the word was going forth. We were somewhere else daydreaming. Watch this. We were in the house where the word was going forth, but we were already made plans to be out the house as soon as possible. Come on. Sometime, man, I would see folks in the church. I mean, bless God, I wasn't up 10 minutes. They already looking at their watch. I'm like, dear God, you came to church today. You should have came for the word. Come on. But watch this. They've already given the benediction before the first, uh, before the, the scriptures is, is, is even read. But now we're in a crisis and there are those who want the word. Come on, Pastor, you sound angry. Yes, I'm angry. Here's why. 
because when we could go to church and get the word, we didn't. And now we need the word, and now everybody wants to go to church, and now we can't. Glory to God. And so now, uh, anyway, I, 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 I'm going to leave that alone. Here's my point. We have to begin to take this word and believe this word. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, the word have I hid that watch this, I will not allow the thought or sin of unbelief to overshadow what your word is telling me. Right? And so we cannot allow what this world is telling us. Not saying that it's not, what they're saying is not there. It's there. That's the fact. Okay? That's the fact. Because I, uh, Sister Hubbard said it's everywhere. It is. It's, all, it's everywhere you look. All we hear is about COVID-19. It's all we hear about. Listen, when the news is on in my house, I either cut it off or I leave the room. Why? I'm tired of hearing it. Because my job is to keep myself full of faith. Keep my family's faith lifted. Keep our church family, uh, their faith lifted. Why? Because in these tough times, we need to have a word of God to one, give us comfort, to two, give us peace, but three, watch this, to give us the strength to do what the word tells us to do. Because it's hard to fight, to fight this thing, but you're fighting from a fear-based perspective. Come on, it's hard to fight this thing when you're wondering, oh dear God, it's bigger than, it could be bigger than God. The devil is a liar. Nothing, you mean this thing is bigger than God? Oh no, listen, let me encourage you. Nothing is bigger than our Father. God has all power in His hand. Glory to God. And so let me encourage you, family. Listen, don't ever think this thing has more power than God. But what the devil does, watch this now, is he is magnifying it. All right? He is magnifying it. And he, watch this, he's giving it a, 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 a momentum. He's magnifying it, making it look bigger. And what, watch this now, because we aren't getting in the Word. Because we aren't calling on God the way we should. The devil makes us believe. Watch this. Why even bother? Why even bother? Come on. It's making us say things like, well, it'll phase out whenever uh, God is done. Or God will do whatever he want to do whenever he's good and ready. And we say foolish things out of our mouth instead of realizing, wait a minute. We have authority. Praise God. We have authority over this thing. Why not exercise our authority and speak to it? And command it to die. Oh, but I'm sorry. You don't believe you can do that. Watch this. Proverbs 18, verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Have you ever asked the question, have you ever asked the question, why did God, what's it now in Proverbs 18, 21, why did God say death and life and use the word death first? Have you ever, ever, have you ever asked that question, why did God allow them to say death first instead of putting life first? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you why. Because most of us are prone to uh, uh, speak into the death cycle first. Most of us are prone. Can you do anything? That's right. Most of us are prone to allow the death cycle to be spoken out of our mouth first. Watch this now. And so God says death and life are in your tongue. God understood because we are human beings. We have the proclivity, this tendency, if you will, to speak more of what we see than what we don't see. And if we see a death cycle occurring, we'll find ourselves agreeing with that death cycle first because it's what we see. Because our sight is part of our five senses. And so, because we are the just, the Bible said the just shall live by faith. Uh, I believe it's uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. And so, he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Which means then, I can't trust what I see. Because while what I see may be a fact, it's not true. Pastor Mike, bless you, man of God. How you doing? Good to see you. While what I see may be a fact, 
A fact is trumped by faith. That was good to say that again, Sergeant. A fact, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A, a fact is trumped by truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A fact is trump, trumped by truth. See, when they said I had cancer, that was a fact. When they gave me the report and showed me the cancer in my body, that was the fact. But my truth was, with his stripes I'm healed. Right? That was my truth. And so even though they said they saw cancer, come on, maybe you all know my story. Uh, I was a few, I was like zero, zero point two from stage four cancer. That was the, the fact is what they saw. And they saw that. They showed it to me. I saw it. But the truth says I'm healed. And so I could not stay uh, in agreement with their fact. So I had then to allow truth to trump their fact. Let me, okay, y'all missed that. Let me see if I can say it then like this. If you are playing spades, come on, all my spade players, come on, give me some hearts, come on, all my spade players. If you are playing spades, now for many of you who are real deep, okay, you too deep for me tonight. But spades is a, spades is a card game. If you would throw out a a a a, 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 a ace of hearts, if I didn't have any hearts in my hand, I could have a two, a two of spades. What's this now? Hey, Brother Dominique, bless you, sir. If you had an ace of hearts and I had a two of spades, if you played your ace, yes, the fact is your ace is a high card. As a matter of fact, yes, the fact is your ace of hearts is the highest card in that deck. But because I have a trump, come on, that two of trump triumphs over that ace of hearts. And so you are playing and think you won, the, you know, you won in hand and you all smiling. But when I go, bam, and put that, that deuce on there, even though it's smaller in its denomination, it triumphs or trumps the ace because it has the ability to cut, come on, cut a high card. Well, watch this. That's what your mouth does. Your mouth filled with truth. Your mouth filled with, with the truth of God's word has the capacity, has the ability to trump whatever this truth is about, or the fact is about this virus. So death and life is in your tongue. Watch this now. And the Bible says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Simply saying, whatever you say is what you live in. Hear me, family. It is what you say is what you live in. Many of us are living in what we're saying. We're living in what's coming, what's coming out of our mouth. You're living in fear. Talking about, oh, dear God, I pray you don't get my family. And yes, while we pray that, what, here's what we should be saying. Father, I thank you that this virus will not come near my house. You should be saying, Father, I thank you that I am covered with the blood of Jesus. You should be saying, Father, I thank you that even if this virus comes near my house, that the glory of God will burn it down. God, I thank you that you're covering my family, my house, everything I touch, you, the air I breathe. I thank you that it's covered and it shall not come now my dwelling. Now, that's what we should be saying. That's allowing the truth of God's word to override or to trump what the facts of the world is telling us, right? Now, you say, Pastor Larry, that, that's way out there. That, that seems impossible. Not with God. Listen, family, we serve a supernatural God who's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we actually think. The, the God that we serve is able to, watch this, he promised to honor his word. And yes, his word is still being honored if we repeat the wrong thing. Yes, that's still a part of, of life. I'm trying to cut me off. Lord bless. Glory to Jesus. The devil trying to cut me off. I pray y'all came back. All right. I see y'all still, still there. I'm going to keep rolling. Hey, Yavanya. Uh, somebody put in Psalms 91. What a, listen, 
Let Psalms 91 be your meditation before you go to bed every night. I encourage you. I encourage you before your eyes close, meditate Psalm 91. Read the entire chapter. I guarantee you it will bring a rest to your mind. Come on. It'll bring a peace to your life. Why? Because that's the word of God. Now watch this. Hebrews 11, 13 says this. It says, through faith we understand. Watch this now. Hey, Sister Jackie. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, the word of God formed those things that we see. But it, didn't, but it wasn't formed out of things that were already made. That's how powerful God's word is. Now, imagine the word of God in your mouth. The word of God in my mouth. Imagine if we take that same authority and take that same faith that we have in the virus and take that same faith in God's word and turn right around and begin to believe what God says and use that same authority and begin to speak against this thing. See, I think what many of us feel to, feel to believe or to understand that we are made in God's image, right? We are made in God's likeness. Hey, Deb, God bless you. I'll see you again. That we are made in his image, in his likeness. Over in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And watch this now. And let them have dominion. Don't miss that word. Let them have dominion. He says, we're going to make this man in our image, make him a reflection of who we are. And then watch this. Give him the power to dominate. Come on. Pastor, dominate where? In the earth. Why would God give man the authority and the power to dominate in the earth unless he intended, watch this now, for man to dominate? Listen, we have to get off our blessed assurance and waiting on God to do something. Listen, what are we going to do if God has given made us in his image and our likeness or his likeness, then he has already put everything in you to dominate. See, what this. The Bible says uh, in the book of Psalm, he says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, that thou crown him with glory and honor? And thou hast made him, watch this now, a little lower than the angels. Now, that word angels comes from a Hebrew word Elohim. Right? Not angelos, but Elohim. That means the Godhead. Thou hast made him a little lower than than the Godhead. Brother Monty, bless you, man. Good, good to see you. And so if God then has made you and I a little lower than the angels, then watch this. Remember now, angels are spirit beings and they are sent forth to minister or to serve you and I who have been made a little lower than God. Ooh, somebody come on, get this. Which means then, if the angels then are serving us, Brother Mike, how you doing, sir? If the angels are serving you and I, and they are, God, the word of God said they were. If they are servants to us, and they are to do our bidding, that are you aware that you can talk to your angel? Come on, are you aware you have you have a ministering angel at your disposal? Come on, you have warring angels to stand guard and command them to stand guard around your house. Come on, around your children your grandchildren, give them jokers something to do. Come on, some of us, man, got angels are so fat, out of shape, bless God. They ain't moved since, since we got them. <laughs> Praise God. But watch this. Angels are ministering spirits who are assigned to work for you and I. Now, why are they assigned to work for us? Because we are God's children. Watch this. Made in his image and his likeness. Uh, St. John chapter 1, verse 12. For as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. As many as believed on his name. Key word, as many as believed on his name. 
And if we believe, if you believe on his name, then watch this. You have qualified. Who could God Almighty? You have qualified to be called a son of the most high God. Oh, praise God. We've been qualified to be called children of the most high God. Well, pastor, I got to be Jewish. Listen, if you're not Jewish, the Bible said, if we be Christ, then are we Abraham's seed and heirs. Heirs are those, watch this, heir is somebody who inherits. Come on. I am a child of God and I get the all rights and privileges through my inheritance. Glory to God. And so hear me, family. Hey, Sister Deborah, God bless you. And so we must then understand who we are. And because we understand who we are, God has qualified us. Quit waiting for your, your self-righteousness to, to, to qualify you. Listen, you can't be good enough to be good. Listen, I wish my children were, the, were, were number one kids on the planet. But watch this. They are my children. Watch this by default. I don't care how good they are or how bad they are. Because they are my children. Watch this. Because they are my children. They're, they don't change. Their status does not change based on how they act. Come on. Truth be told, they can go to the other part of the world, change their name. When it's all said and done, get a blood test. Ooh, I'm getting ready to shout, y'all. I'm going to shout. Hey, Mother Curry, I'm going to call you tonight, okay? Is that all right? They can get a blood test, and if they get a blood test, what's going to come out? What's this? Is my blood. The DNA in my body is what they're going to see. Why? Because my blood is running in their vein. And so they can call themselves whatever they want. They can call themselves Shaka Zulu. When it's all said and done, they get a blood test. It's going to be whatever blood is in my vein will be in their vein. And watch this. Because we are sons of God, we have blood type G in our vein. You have blood type God in your vein. Glory to God. You've been bought with a price. You have the blood of God running in your vein. Which means then that if I have blood type G, blood type God in my vein, and I am indeed my daddy's child, that means then I have my daddy's DNA. And watch this. That means I have all rights and privileges to do whatever my daddy did. Because why? I'm his son. Now, you're saying, Pastor, are you saying that that we can speak a word to this virus and it must obey us? Look at my face. That's exactly what I'm, I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm telling you tonight. Tonight, listen, tonight, we're going to speak to this storm tonight in the name of Jesus. Tonight is the night this thing dies in Jesus' name. Tonight is the night this thing dies. Why? Because I pray that your faith has been, been raised now tonight to a new level. I pray tonight that your faith has been risen to the place where it needs to be. I pray tonight that as we bombard the, the atmosphere and take authority over the prince of powers in the air tonight, listen, y'all, <clears throat> I prophesy tonight that, listen, that God that is going to allow us to shift this thing. Come on. He's going to allow us to shift this thing tonight in the name of the Lord. I believe with all my heart. Listen, I have a confidence tonight that because we pray and because we're going to pray the word, that tonight God, your God's going to hear us. Who with all my heart tonight, I believe it. But Pastor, it's not a lot of us here. We don't need a whole lot. The Bible says it's two or three of us. Come on, if two or three, I'm here, you're here. Somebody say, Pastor, I agree. Come on, put it in, come on, type it in. Say, Pastor, I agree with you. Come on, come on. Come on, family. Come on, say, Pastor, I agree. I need somebody to say, Pastor, I agree. Tonight is the night that this thing is torn down in the spirit. Tonight, I believe God. And tonight, as we pray, man, I agree by faith. In the Son of the Living God, of whom I serve, 
of whom is my elder brother, of whom his father is my daddy. Tonight I agree in the name of Jesus. This thing is canceled tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's my confidence. Pastor, you seem so sure. Listen, this is the confidence I have in him. That if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. 1 John 5, 14. And so my job, our job, family, hear me, family. Our job is to put it out there. He said, Pastor, well, what if it don't work? Watch this. What if it does? What if tomorrow morning you woke up and the news was, you know what? All of a sudden, thousands around the world are healed. What? What? What if tomorrow morning the headlines read thousands, millions suddenly heal? Woo, come on, come on, come on, come on. Man, there's going to be a revival across this nation and around the world. Oh, what if in the morning the report came back, millions healed across this nation? Come on. People get on Facebook and say, Pastor, you know what? Yesterday I was diagnosed. I was coughing all night. But all of a sudden, I was healed by, by the power of God. Listen, who's going to be exalted? God himself. He's our healer. He's our, listen, y'all, I'm ready to pray. I'm ready to pray. Listen, let's pray. Come on. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, first of all. Oh, God, we thank you so much. We thank you. We bless your holy name. God, you are our way maker. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. God, there is nobody like you nowhere. God, you speak and the elements obey you. You step on water and water holds you. You call the storm to stop at your word. God, that's how powerful you are. God, you are awesome. You are more than awesome. God, tonight we love you. Tonight we adore you. Tonight we exalt your name. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter your courts with praise. We are thankful, God, tonight unto you and we bless your holy name. God, you are good. Your name is worthy to be praised. We honor you, God. And tonight we reverence your holy name. Now, God, tonight, based on your word, you told us in the book of Mark, the 11th chapter, you said, if any two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything, God, you said that it shall be done unto us. God, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus. We open our mouth and we point our hand to the air and we speak to this virus. God, collectively in the name of Jesus, we exercise our authority. We exercise our dominion. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we speak to it and command it to die tonight. In Jesus' name. Devil, we take authority over every principality. We curse every python spirit. We curse every drawback spirit. We curse every takeover spirit. We curse every spirit of fear. We curse every spirit of unbelief. We curse it now at the root in the name of Jesus. We forbid you to reign. Every terrorist spirit, we forbid you to reign. And in the name of Jesus, we command that virus to die. We plead the blood over it right now. We plead the blood. Oh, devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. The blood of Jesus be against you right now. In Jesus' precious name, we loose that blood over that virus. We loose the blood of Jesus over every principality. We loose the blood of Jesus over every demonic force that come to kill, steal, and destroy. And we exercise our dominion as children of the Most High God. Devil, take your hands off this earth. Take your hands off this nation. Take your hands off God's people. Take your hands off God's creation. Loose them now and let them go. I decree it with my mouth. I release it with my voice. And in the name of Jesus, God be exalted today in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you right now. We extol your name right now, God, because you are worthy. God, only you can do this. And we thank you right now. It's by faith in your son. It's by faith in the blood. It's by faith in the finished works of Calvary that we call it done in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. 
Oh, hallelujah. God, we give you praise. All the glory, all the honor belong to you, God. No man gets the glory save you. No man gets the credit, God, but you. We thank you now. Oh, bless your holy name. We thank you now, God, in Jesus' name. Let faith come alive in the hearts, God, of these, your people, in Jesus' name. Now we thank you. Now, God, we praise you. God, we exalt you. Oh, we honor your name. Thank you for doing what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. I believe God. Nothing is too hard for God. Listen, if he can kill cancer, this virus don't stand a chance. Glory to God. Yeah, but I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Listen. Whoo! Listen, y'all. We stand in faith, man. We stand in faith. We are God's children. We stand in faith believing. Now watch this. Here's what, here's what I want you to expect. Expect testimonies. Expect testimonies. Expect testimonies. I expect testimonies of folks getting healed. I expect testimonies. Come on, somebody. I expect, I expect testimonies of what God has done. Glory to God. I expect that. It is so. It is so in the name of Jesus. Why? Because we decreed it. Job said, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be done unto thee. And the light of God shall shine upon thy way. Why? Because we decreed it by the power of all. Hallelujah. We decree it by the power of Almighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree it and call it done in Jesus' holy and matchless name tonight. And so listen, I want you to live in expectation. Hear me, family. Live in expectation. Hey, my son. Live in expectation, not in fear. Hear me. We live tonight in expectation. We have spoken because we believe. And we believe, therefore we speak. All right? And so listen, I don't care what you hear on the news tonight. Don't let us change how you believe. As a matter of fact, I encourage you, if you see it's, 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 it's coming against your faith, listen, I encourage you, cut the news off. Cut it off. If you, hear, if, you, you, if you believe it's tearing down your faith, then don't watch it. All right? Don't watch it because your faith needs to be strong in this hour. Our faith needs to be strong in this hour. Hear me, family. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. Yes, our church, our church family. We are praying for you on tomorrow morning. Somebody, please put in put in our prayer line number tomorrow. Tomorrow at ten o'clock, we will be on a conference call tomorrow morning at ten o'clock sharp. Man, listen, our prayer team. We are going to be gang ganging up on the devil and agreeing again tomorrow morning uh, in prayer. Somebody, please, who has it. Please uh, put it on our our, our 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 stream here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody, come on, get it, get it, get it, get it. Come on, please, somebody, get it. Tomorrow morning at ten o'clock, we have a conference call. Oh, it's nine something. Yeah, oh dear God. Uh, somebody, please put it, put it up, please. Nine seven eight. Uh, I don't want to guess it, but somebody will put it on our ticker tape here. Uh, our uh, our prayer tomorrow. I'm encouraging you all tomorrow morning, call in uh, to this prayer at 10 o'clock. Man, listen, we're going to bombard heaven and give God praise. All right, it's 978-990-5000. That's 978-990-5000. Give me the access code. Get, come on, give me the access code, will you? That's the, that's the calling number. Give me the access code. Thank you. Extension three five five seven nine four go on mama you good girl look at you you're getting better at this stuff all right come on family write, write it down nine seven nine seven eight nine nine zero five thousand access code three five five seven nine four pastor rob how are you sir and so listen i encourage you tomorrow listen 10 o'clock sharp now if you don't know pastor larry we, we don't start late we'll start early but never start late. Why? Because we honor God. All right? We never start late. We start early because we honor God. 
right? And tomorrow, we're going to be in prayer. I invite you to come on in and be a part of this time of prayer because we're going to bombard heaven, man, again. But first, we're going to praise God. If you don't come in with a praise, listen, I'm going to personally cut you off. Come in tomorrow, man, with our praise. We're going to praise God and worship and thank God like never before and give God glory for victory. Come on, for victory. Somebody type in, come on, type in victory, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Come on, type it in. Come on, victory, victory, victory. Why? We are God's children. Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world for you. And since he's overcome, our job is to not be in fear. Our job is to walk in victory. Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, y'all. As always, it's been my pleasure, man. I love being here with you all every night at the 7 o'clock hour. You all are my therapy. <laughs> Glory to God. I get to give you the word to encourage you. And because you are here, that encourages Pastor Larry as well. Listen, make sure you tell a neighbor, tell a friend. Tune in. Facebook Live every night this week at 7 o'clock. Listen, we're on every night at 7 o'clock giving you the word of God. My job is simple, you all, is to encourage you with the word of God. That's all I have. That's all I have. No games, no tricks, no gimmicks. All I have is the word of the Lord. All right? And it's my job to give you the word of God. Uh, today, earlier, uh, I saw my good friend, Pastor Daryl Holman was on. Uh, uh, my, 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 my best friend, you know, Dr. Henry Razor, he was on. Uh, 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 what's his name? Dear God. Uh, uh, Pastor Lee. He was on at 1130. And, and, you know, hear me. The, the, word, the word of God is getting out here. Okay, the word of God is getting out. But Pastor Larry, thanks you all so much for tuning in and being a part of what we're doing here uh, at the 7 o'clock hour. I really don't mean to go a whole hour. I really don't. I really don't mean to be on here for a whole hour. That's a long time. But there is so much in me. And there's some of you, you're still struggling. You're struggling. You're struggling. You're struggling. <clears throat> and because you are struggling, my job is to keep pumping you with faith. You know, like an air pump. You know, any of y'all recall those those uh, 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 old-fashioned air, air pumps when you put the needle in a thing or, or tie it on and you just, shh, 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 shh. come on, you pump yourself into a frenzy. Well, th this, this is my job, to keep pumping you full of faith. After what, what you hear all day long, you, some of you all have a slow leak in your faith. Well, guess what? I'm the tire man. I come to pat your leak and shh, 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 put some more faith air back into your life. Pastor, why? Because faith is what's going to cause this thing to change. All right, y'all? Listen. All right, we got to go. I'm, I, I, I'm way over time. Again, I'm over time again, but I love you all so much with the love of the Lord. Mother Curry, I'm calling you tonight, okay? I haven't heard your voice in a while. All right? You know how we are. All right? Y'all, that's, that's our church mother. She is cool. Hey, my mother, I see you, girl. You say what? Plug it up. That's right. I'm going to plug it up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to plug it up and pump faith back into the lives of God's people. All right? I love you all. As we always say, we who have the God kind of faith, we call those things that are not as though they were. All right? And listen, we stay in faith. We stay focused in what? We know that God, we know that God has our life under control. All right, y'all. I got to go. Love you so much. Peace. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 sharp, at 7 o'clock sharp. I will see you back here. All right. Come on. Give me some love. Come on. You know how we do. Come on. Come on. You know how we roll. Come on. Big hug. I love y'all. All right. I pray God's peace tonight as you rest in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I decree tonight sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. I, re I, I release it now. Father, touch Brother Will in the name of Jesus. Father, touch him by your power. I curse the fever in his life. I speak to it and I call that fever to come down and the body to be whole in the name of Jesus. It is so. All right, y'all. We got to go. Love y'all. See you tomorrow. 7 o'clock sharp. God bless you. Bye for now.